George Cosmides at drcosmides.com, home of healthy aging, and creator and developer of the Life Without Diabetes program. But today's topic isn't necessarily on diabetes, it's on drinks. And you wanna call them energy drinks or sports drinks, and I'm here to break some myths and clear up some misinformation surrounding them. So let's jump right in. There are common drinks on the market that we see advertised, uh, Monster, Red Bull, that contain ca uh, caffeine, and they can be as high as 120 to 150 milligrams of caffeine. Just to give you an idea of how much that is, it's about a little bit more than a cup of coffee. Average cup of coffee is about 100 milligrams of caffeine. So what will that do? Uh, well, it stimulates the heart rate, it disrupts digestion, and it stresses out the gland in the body, both the kidney and a really important gland called the adrenal gland. Now the adrenal gland are small pea-sized glands, or actually kidney-shaped glands, that sit right inside the kidneys. And their main job, their main focus, their main living life uh, is to release adrenaline and also to supply blood to the heart. Now, why is that important? And what are the telltale signs that your adrenals are becoming exhausted? Well, one of the telltale signs is dizziness if you stand up quickly or dizziness if you go from a lying position to a standing position, and here's why. When we supply blood to the heart, or when the adrenal glands rather supply blood to the heart, the heart then has to pump blood to the brain as we change position, elevations. And that multi, you know, minuscule time that we go from sitting to standing, maybe a half a second or less or around a second, the heart has to respond quickly to pump blood up to the brain. Well, if it's not getting an adequate supply of blood from the adrenals that are exhausted either through stress or through stimulants or both, there can be a delay, and that delay can be a dizziness delay. Now, dizziness can be caused by a number of factors. A middle ear infection can cause that, and adrenal fatigue can cause that. Now, I'm practicing for over 20 years and focusing really on nutritional and organ dysfunction, dietary lifestyle aspects of, of, of healthcare and medicine, I found that over 95% are adrenal disorders or adrenal weakening, and we need to support them. There's certain nutrients for them. Also, we need to really look back and see, number one, how do we handle stress, and what foods or drinks we're putting in the body that are direct stimulants. Coffee, energy drinks, sports drinks. We really need to take a look at that. Now, you know, I'm very conservative. I don't believe that any element done infrequently can cause us real harm. So if it's a Red, uh, Red Bull or a Monster or a sports drink or any other name or type that has a caffeine-based stimulant, if they're taken infrequently, I think the body, a healthy body can tolerate them pretty well, and that's really not a concern. But when they're done consistently on a daily basis or uh, multiple days a week basis, week after week, month after month, then we're setting the groundwork for a constant negative stimulation to the adrenal glands, the digestive glands. There's been some hard research by a noted ophthalmologist that links aspartame and NutraSweet to demyelination of the optic nerve leading to blindness. And again, I don't think one can or half a dozen cans in a year is gonna cause that particular problem but it certainly would behoove us to consider, hey, how am I handling my, my stimulant intake? Is it daily? Do I have a cup of coffee a day? Well, if we do that five days a week, that's about six gallons a year. So we need to look at it more of a long-term approach. So what should be in your sports drinks? Well, calcium, magnesium, and water are the three things that we really need to fire our muscles properly, to function properly, to hydrate properly, and sugar is not needed at the time of exercise. Now, there are exceptions. If you're doing a triathlon or Ironman and you're on uh, physical activity for hours on end, then maybe it's possible a good complex carbohydrate uh, and some essential fatty acids certainly are appropriate. But if we're talking about the average person exercises for 45 minutes to an hour, just pure, clean, cool water, not icy cold, uh, not hot teas, 
just water and making sure that your calcium magnesium ratio should be a three to one ratio, three parts, uh, three parts calcium to one part magnesium is a good way to begin this process. So I hope 